I think the idea that there's a physical space that is between the viewer and the art object has been very under-investigated. There is, in fact, a deep and long history of that space. But the history of art traces itself back as far, obviously, to the wall cave paintings or to the Greek mysteries where the um, person might engage the, uh, the object in itself in a, in a sacred place in that it was basically a temple and then the art gallery has and the museum has moved increasingly towards the concept of the art museum or gallery as an entertainment area as another ancillary to the entertain, entertainment industry and I'm quite frankly opposed to this I'd rather it go back to the concept of the sacred space that the viewer is asked to come in and engage the artwork it doesn't give it to you you must go to it and in return it gives back to you something upon asking for that. So it's a, it's a mutual binary model and requires both the viewer's interest and the artwork's accessibility. So in that regard, surprise, I think, is an interesting element. That is where surprise functions for me because that is where, by foiling the expectations of the viewer, you create a momentary lapse in their ability to, to process it. And in doing so, you, you create a kind of a blank space that you can fill with information. So if you can do that, and it only takes a, a split second, then you've created the possibility for learning, and that to me is interesting. The idea of surprise is, I think, also another idea that's constantly undervalued in the art world. I think shock is what we normally cons uh, attend when we think of an art gallery and exhibition. I mean, the idea of this show that recently pursued through New York, Sensation, was a good example. It's a Saatchi collection show. And a lot of the work was quite thoughtful inside of it, but as I found at Art Basel Unlimited and any large fair like the Biennales or Documenta, a lot of them are premised on the idea of art as a teaching model, the idea that the viewer needs to be educated by the artist or the artists, and that it's up to the viewer to sort of sit and learn. It would be odd if we went to a restaurant and asked the restaurateur, what am I eating? Or go to a movie and say, what did I just see? I think even the most humble person is readily able to give an opinion on a movie or a dinner they ate. But in the art gallery, for some reason, they've been uh, hamstrung recently over the, perhaps the past 20 or 30 years as the art tended towards a tautological model and moved away from the concrete. It increased the text-based function of the art so that we get now a phenomenon where people say, tell me what I'm seeing or tell me what I'm looking at. And I'd like them to come up with an immediate opinion, visual or otherwise, and let that be sufficient. It doesn't mean it may be completely satisfactory, but I think you first have to re-empower the viewer. That's a risk that the artist has to be willing to take. And if you take that risk, then you can possibly engage them in a dialogue. Otherwise, you're simply talking to them or at them.